Hey guys it's Lesbian Boy. And today, I'm gonna show you, how to make your artwork retro as heck. <laughs> Disclaimer, I'm not actually a professional artist and what I'm gonna say are not facts so take them with a grain of salt. Also sorry for my English, I didn't pay attention in class. Of course if you want to make retro art, you gotta add those neon grid lines, some mountains, and of course, the yellow pink synthwave sun that's literally in every single image in tutorial on the internet. Well, you don't have to add these things specifically, think of the endless possibilities. Cars, cities, computers, cities, space palm trees, beaches, cities, etc. Everything but please. Stop doing this. Of course if you really want to make good retro art, you gotta learn how to make good artworks. Basically, get good. Try to practice some fundamentals, like anatomy, design, composition, etc. Of course it really depends on what kind things you are making specifically. For examples, this artwork by Hiroshi Nagai requires perspective, colors, composition knowledge but not a lot of shading and anatomy. However, this artwork by Heijim Soriyama requires a ton of anatomy, shading, rendering, color theory, three-dimensional form, perspective, gesture, understanding of material, texture, light logic, design, a good visual library. Worry not cause there are some easier stuff you can do. Notice how almost all of the retro artworks you see online are scans of traditional artworks? The book JCA Annual 3 for example. Artworks are printed out on paper, and scanned later by some people. This changes how the artwork looks. When you zoom in on some artworks, you will usually see some dots all over the image. This is the result of a certain way of printing. I won't go into details on why, because I honestly don't know much about printing. I found this image which might help explain it. You can easily make this effect in Photoshop. Go to Filter. Pixelate. Halftone. Mess around with the settings to find the best one that fits your artwork since your artwork won't be the same as mine. And don't forget to change the opacity. That's not all. Do you think you can print every color you see on your PC? Well think again, because, in reality, the colors will look a lot more desaturated and gray when printed. Here's a quick example with the color wheel. As you can see, green, pink, blue are quite desaturated. While yellow, orange, red, teal, stays pretty much the same. If you have Photoshop, you can check how your artwork will look like when printed by pressing Ctrl plus Y. But to actually change the colors, go to Image, Mode, and choose CMYK Color. There's no undo so remember to have a backup. You can also do this manually, by using Color Balance, Selective Colors or Camera Raw Filter. Nice. Also, for some reason, 80s artwork looks kinda washed out. The blacks are not really black, but rather dark gray. You can see it here. And here. And also here. Maybe not here though. There are exceptions of course. To achieve this effect, you can use a lighten layer filled with a dark gray not black or use a curve adjustment layer. Just drag this point up, and then change the opacity of course. Guys, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. This step is so important. It's literally the cherry on top of the cake, it's the ketchup on your french fries, it's the pineapple on top of the pizza. Go to your potato and open up your browser, to look up some texture overlays, and just download them. Now. Go, wild. Put them on top of your drawing. Change the blending mode, change the opacity, change the order of each layer. Good. Each time you will get a slightly different unique result. This is really what gonna make it looks retro. Wait hold up. Hold up. Hold up. You think the video will end here, don't you? Not so fast. We are going to make something from scratch, and it's going to be aesthetic as f- First, open up Photoshop Chan. Or any other digital art software. In my case, it's actually Paint Tool Sci V2 Chan. File, New, for the canvas size, I usually go for 3000 x 3000 pixels. You can mess with other settings if you want. Now you got yourself a new canvas, empty, just like all of my achievements in life. 
gather yourself some reference photos. Here are mine. And just start sketching. So I did some sketching off camera. Totally didn't trace the reference photos to save some time. Also, I'm not gonna go over everything I do cause there are literally thousands of Photoshop tutorials on the internet. Now, let's check how the artwork is doing. That looks pretty crappy, but let's apply the stuff we just learned. First, the halftone effect. I usually blur my halftone, so it won't look too harsh. This will affect the quality of your image so be cautious. I also like to double click on my image, and change these two settings here. Hold Alt and click this, pointer, it will split in two, drag one of them into the middle. In a nutshell, this represents transparency, and this represents the values. For the top bar, that would be the values of the layer you're on. For the bottom bar, that would be the values of the underlying image. Now you can see, that the halftone effect is less prominent in darker areas and lighter areas. I didn't mention this effect before. But you can sharpen your image by going to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. If you go crazy with this effect, it will make your image appear somewhat lower quality. The reason I didn't mention this before, because it doesn't happen a lot in 80s artwork. Or maybe they're way too subtle to be noticeable. Still looks cool nonetheless. Another effect I didn't mention, the glow effect. Just duplicate your artwork, blur it and change the blending mode and opacity. Again, I don't see this effect a lot in 80s artwork. They would add glow by hand, but only in glowing objects or light sources. By applying this glow effect, you're doing to every object in your image, making it looks kinda digital. And guess what I mean. But if you think it looks cool, then go for it. Next, I used selective color to change the colors. Why am I making everything more saturated? To that I say, I have no idea. Maybe this is a reminder, that everything I mentioned is not a rule, and you don't have to obey them. Instead, follow your instinct. Now onto the fun part, textures. Since someone asked me, what textures I used last time. I will add links to those in the description this time. And, I did end up using selective colors again to change the dark colors, making them more green to add some contrast with the overused blue. To touch it up a little bit, the last effect I used is camera raw filter and filter. I won't go over everything in this cause there are so much stuff. So just mess around with it yourself. You will quickly get a hang of it. Finally. We. Are. Done.